Real Agriculture Soybean School is brought to you by Basic Seeds and Lollamond Plant Care. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. The calendar is turning to June. Um, it's been cold and wet in Ontario with lots of stops and starts in the planting season. Many early planted soybeans are struggling to emerge and establish, and, and there's still plenty of beans to go in the ground. What are the prospects for those struggling beans? Uh, when should growers consider replanting, and, and how much yield potential remains for beans yet to be planted. To tackle these questions, we've managed to round up two of the best minds in the business. Uh, it's great to be joined by Ontario Ministry of Agriculture soybean specialist Horace Bonner and University of Guelph professor Dr. David Hooker. Gentlemen, it is a busy time of year. Uh, thank you for finding some time for the Soybean School. Great to hear, be here, Bern, and uh, especially with Horace as well. Nice to see you, gents. Nice to see you. Hey, Horst, let's kick this off with you. Uh, growers started planting soybeans in April in Ontario. You know, it, it's it's June. Um, uh, it's about to arrive, and there's still lots of beans to go. Uh, there's beans in the ground. Uh, you know, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, it's been another interesting year, hasn't it? There's been a few nice little windows for many of us. Now, there's still soybeans to be planted, maybe you know, even up to a third on average. Of course, many growers are finished as well. Um, and the overall story, Bernard, is not like it has been some years where we just get deluged with massive rains. This spring, rain for sure, but it's really the cool temperatures that are causing us some real grief in the soybean world, or at least concern. Let me put it that way, concern. So I planted some. There was a window um, uh, end of April, April 25th. You can see in this picture, I took this picture yesterday, and uh, the stand is reasonable, right? Um, about 130,000 plants there, and I'm okay with that. This is up at Alora. I wish there was a little bit more, but uh, overall, it, it, it's it's reasonable. Now, here's the interesting part. If you look at this next picture, there's still beans coming up. You know, this was planted 35 days ago when I took this picture, five weeks, and there's still a few beans coming up. And so that's really what we're talking about here, the incredibly slow, slow, painfully slow emergence of soybeans. And how long do you wait? until you just, you, you got to do something. Now, for a lot of us, it's still wet and we haven't been able to do anything anyway, but we, we got to consider, you know, how long does it take for soybeans before you think about replanting? Yeah. So I want to talk about replanting. I mean, how long is, how, how, are we worried, Horst, about those beans? How long should we wait? Yeah, so typical soybean emergence, we like to see them up in 10 days. In Ontario, that's kind of normal. If it's really warm, they can be up in four or five days. But I consider 10 days normal. 20 days, we don't even uh, think about really taking a plant stand before 20 days, right? But this year, 30 days is, I think, how long you have to wait before you really can assess them. At least the, be the beans planted so far. Like, I mean, once we get into June, things will warm up and we won't have to wait 30 days. But the beans planted so far, you have to wait four weeks before you can really decide um, I, uh, from what I'm seeing. And, and you can see from, from this picture here, planted May 12th, you know, 18 days ago, and they're just barely coming up. And I have one more picture for you, Bernard. Remember I said that 10-day thing normal? Uh, these beans here planted 10 days ago, and there's nothing. And so we got to wait, right? We got to yeah. wait. Let's let's talk planting, Dave. Um, you know, you know, what's the research tell us about you know, um, you know, planting date? Uh, again, we're at June here right now. Um, you know, yeah. what's the potential? What's left? Yeah, well, planting date. Um, just the question of when the best planting date is, and what happens to the yield if planting is delayed or ultra early. Like those questions have been around for over 100 years and we're still doing planting date studies 
after over 100 years of research. And so it, it's kind of funny, but but planting date really depends on the year. It depends on the genetics. And so as genetics improve, as crop management changes over time, we have to reevaluate um, some um, agronomic or management um, practices and planting date is one of them. And so we started a planting date study. Um, there's been, a, we have or recognize a research gap in our planting date information because of, you know, conditions that may have delayed planting or may have posed themselves for an ultra late, ultra early uh, planting date. And so we wanted to fill those, that, those gaps in a little bit with data. So we started a, a massive planting date study um, in 2021, that started in 2021, over at nine site years at Alora um, and Winchester, Eastern Ontario, and also in Bridgetown. And then with all that robust data, we can make or fill in some of those research gaps um, that we've been looking to fill in. Talk about some of these slides, Dave. I've got three yeah. of them. I've got the Alora data. I've got the Ridgetown data and the Winchester data. Take us through us. Tell, tell us what we're seeing. So this data was from a big planting date project um, led by Josh Nazilski, Horst Bonner, and myself. And Seth Ritzma was a master student um, as well. And we can't forget the technicians, the manager at Winchester Research Farm, Holly Biker, and my technicians, um, Jonathan Brickman, Ken Van Ray, and Carlene Scott at Bridgetown as well. And I need to also recognize GFO and OMAFA for significant funding um, as well. So let's talk about these slides. And so I based this data, this, is, this data is over across three years. And so let's go through Alora and then Winchester and then Bridgetown very quickly. So this is, the data was relative or is relative to the maximum yield of the adapted varieties at each location. So we have multiple planting dates, uh, usually three planting dates per year, and it varies a little bit by year. And then we had five maturity groups uh, within each one of those planting dates, the same varieties. And so these curves um, on these graphs are all relative to the adapted varieties. So at Alora, that adapt those adapted varieties would be maturity group 0 0.3, 0 0.3 to um, a maturity group of one. So as you can see, this, this dark line, this black line indicates the yield response relative to the maximum yield, which is 100% maximum yield. And as you can see, as planting is delayed or it progresses through May and into June to the end of June, yield decreases. But it doesn't decrease as much as one would think. Um, it would decrease. And so as you can see from this Alora slide, for instance, this black line, the solid black line, the 90% yield potential is, is a break at the first week of June, at 90% of the yield the first week of June. So it's, there's no reason to panic, I don't think, of, um, for delaying uh, soybean yield, but recognize that soybean yields do decrease um, as we get into uh, late May or into June, but maybe the yield loss isn't as much as we'd expect. So those are with adaptive varieties. So Dave, I, I was the guy who planted those with Seth, yeah. Al Laura. Two things that I think are worth noting there uh, that I, I observed in the field. The If you're going to absolutely maximize soybean yield with long season beans, they are the ones that shine planted really early. And you can see that in that graph, right? But then the adapted actually does better. So there is something to be said about planting an adapted variety per zone. And then if the other thing I really noticed about this data is, you know, we talk about switching corn hybrids at a certain date. And in soybeans, we don't talk much about it, but this data does show that at a certain date, you got to switch to a short day bean or a shorter day bean. And I, I don't want to make too much of where those cross, the two lines cross, but somewhere close to the end of June, 
uh, we, we need to start thinking about uh, the, the maturity that you're growing to finish up. Well, what's your take on, on switching? Yeah, the switching, like very good point. So growers are asking whether we should be switching soybean varieties. So, you know, at the end of May, 1st of June, kind of like what we do for corn, but the data is quite clear. It, we're going to show the Winchester data, data and Ridgetown very shortly as well. And all of those three site, nine site years, it's very consistent that we should not be thinking about switching until probably the end of June or third week of June or something like that mm. based, based on this data. So let's, let's have a quick look at the, the Winchester and the Ridgetown data. Gentlemen, start with Ridgetown here. Um, anything of significance that we need to sort of uh, talk about for that maturity zone? And the Ridgetown data, again, the black line represents adapted varieties. And so in this case, it's maturity groups 2.5 uh, and 3.2. So we average that data. And this is the line that produced. Notice the 100% yield potential is in April. And then it decreases um, as we get into the month of May and June. So we could have planted, we should have planted soybeans or tried to plant them at the beginning of April in Ridgetown to see if there was an actual plateau there at Ridgetown. So it's something that we need to explore at Ridgetown. Ridgetown data was um, a little bit different than Alora and Winchester. Ridgetown, we could not, or the data at least, when we planted the end of April, um, it started to see, we started to see a yield decline. We didn't see that plateau um, in like the last week of April and the first week of May, like Alora and Winchester. And so maybe, you know, this indicates that at Ridgetown or in the late maturity groups or, or we're in the high heat unit zones. Um, maybe we can plant um, even earlier um, to maximize yield potential. But again, we, we see a, just a steady decline and really it's difficult to pinpoint a switch state, the switch state where those lines cross at Bridgetown. As you can see, those that blue line, that light blue line, it, it's the early um, variety here at Ridgetown is maturity group 1.8 and essentially it's parallel with the uh, adaptive variety. So there's no real clear switch date right through the month of mm. June. And that makes sense, Dave, right? In terms of we would expect that switch date for double cropping. We, we know that we need to plant shorter. And if you were to draw, extrapolate those lines, that would take you well into July. So it, that does make sense. Yep. Dave, the only other thing I want to point out real quick on this, even though today at the beginning of June, we're, we've lost more than 10, 10% of yield at Richtown based on this data, right. that does not mean you're going to yield less uh, by 10% in terms of your average farm yield because the rest of the season is so important. So let's say the rest of the season is awesome and it would be a 70 bushel year right? If it was planted early. Well, according to this 10% less, you'd be at a 63 bushel, but it, that's still an awesome number, right? If the rest of the year and your average farm yield is 50, all I'm saying is the rest of the year makes a big difference. What we're not saying that we're immediately taking off 10% of your average farm yield just because we're in. And, and that's your point, isn't it, Dave, that there is time for soybeans still. Yeah, absolutely. Like planting date studies, like so year dependent, extreme, like every year is different, like big news story there, but every year is different. And 2025, we did not get a good start to 2025 just because of the cool temperatures, soybeans aren't developing. So the question becomes then, have we lost any yield potential? by planting at the end of May, let's say, or the beginning of June compared to three or four weeks ago, you know, when soybeans have, they're not even, haven't emerged yet in some fields that have been planted in April. And this is in June already. <laughs> so we, we still have hope for those, but what has any potential been lost in 2025 because of that delay? Um, I, I don't think so. 
Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna put up the Winchester slide here. Any points you want to talk on here for for the Eastern Ontario folks? Yeah, the Alora and Winchester slides say the graphs are almost identical to each other. It's just a, amazing. Horse mentioned that if you're going ultra early, you know that the late uh, a long season variety uh, may be beneficial. We saw the same thing with the Alora and Winchester shows that as well. And we see a, a possible switch date, you know, through the month of June as well. Very similar to Alora um, as well. But just notice the difference in the yield potential between the normal or the adaptive varieties. Like we're at 100%, you know, in the, in the middle of May or so. There's a, a plateau, essentially, same yield. No statistical difference between late April and middle of May. But you see the di yield difference between the adaptive varieties and the short season varieties, the light blue line. The short season varieties are yielding 10% less regardless of when they are planted um, in terms of the early planting. Well, great stuff. Uh, one last point I want to talk about. Um, uh... And that's on planting. That's replanting. Horst, um, what's your thoughts there? You know, obviously we said beans uh, in the ground, 30 days, uh, we need to see them. But at what point, when are you pulling the trigger on a, on a replant? Yeah, in terms of that plant stand, hopefully the forecast is right and next week is warm and good and the rest of them will push out. So what we talk about is 90 to 100,000 plants per acre on a, a growthy, nice uh, loam type of soil, right, as a minimum, and you don't even think about replanting unless you're below that. On heavy clays, 120,000. Now, it's going to depend a little bit on on row width and, and a few other factors, but those are generally the numbers, 100,000, 120,000. And, um, yeah, if you're above that, carry on. Don't worry about it right now. Well, uh, you know, gentlemen, uh, some great stuff. It's uh, just amazing uh, to have this type of research for Ontario and be able to have this conversation when it needs to be had uh, as growers are making decisions in the field. Um, always great to have you both on the Soybean School. Thanks for taking the time. 